Hello everyone. In my last uh, video addressed stars. How do stars operate? That was the basic idea of uh, quickly reviewing a star is basically a ball of gas. The gas is comprised mainly of hydrogen. It has helium, has other elements in it, but it's basically a giant ball initially of primarily hydrogen. What happens is that uh, there's a couple of forces at play that generate the behavior of a star. What are those? Well, the energy of a star, once it gets uh, hot enough in its core, is nuclear fusion. But why doesn't the star just kind of dissipate from all the heat? Well, it's because the overlayers of the star kind of that weight, in a sense, that gravitational pull contains the core. So we have in the cent center of a star a very, very hot core, uh, many millions of degrees Kelvin, 10 to 15 million degrees Kelvin. And uh, the principal mechanism is gamma rays kind of come out of this uh, hydrogen fusion process. They radiate, go out through the sun. There's a process called Bremsstrahlung radiation where these high-energy gamma ray photons basically interact with the plasma going out. They eventually become, they generate lower energy photons, so on and so forth. By the time they get near the convective zone of the sun, the other zone of the sun, what we essentially have is light that's kind of in a, primarily in the visible range, and that's why you can see it. Now our sun, for example, uh, appears yellowish, greenish, and it's, um, it's kind of a, uh, many stars have that temperature, our sun is a rather average star. Now what I'm going to talk about is the evolution of stars. Uh, it turns out that here's something, a key fact. The life of a star really is driven by one thing, and that one thing is its initial mass. If a star is a mass of around the sun, one solar mass, or somewhat um, less, it tends to have a very long stable lifetime. However, if a star is on the order of three, four, five times uh, the mass of the sun, it turns out that the star has a very fast, furious life. Now, you might think, well, a large star ought to live longer. Why is, why is, uh, why does it have a shorter life versus a small star which has less hydrogen? Why does it have a longer life? Well, the answer has to do with the fact that a large star has a core that is much higher temperature and pressure. And you understand why the temperature and pressure is higher. And because of that, the rate of the nuclear fusion reaction is much, much higher. The, the rate of the reaction goes up exponentially with temperature. So the net result is that a large star will live many orders of magnitude shorter duration than a yellow star or a light star. And it's also interesting, it'll have a very dramatic ending. A heavy star will eventually um, explode on itself when it goes into an unstable phase. Again, before I jump to that, we need to talk a little bit about um, categorizing stars, and I'm going to talk about the, it's called the uh, HR diagram. You'll see what that means as I get into the, um, I'm going to go to slides pretty soon because you must get pretty tired of looking at me. I can move my hands and do a couple things. One other thing before I leave my uh, in persona part of this uh, lecture is stars come in different sizes, uh, and their size in, in some sense depends on their age. Um, a very large star, it's big, it's called a supergiant, these tend to be older stars, and they're going to be, you know, they kind of fill up the screen. A star like the sun is glowing a nice bright orange or yellowish, and you're going to have stars that eventually turn into what are called white dwarfs. These are very old stars. 
And then you then have a type star that cannot be seen. It's called a black hole. So I'm wearing a black shirt and there's a black hole star right here, but you can't see it. It's no longer a star in a sense, but uh, black holes come from large stars. And in this series of lectures, I'll get to how that, that forms as well. So um, with that, we got red giants. We sort of have uh, yellowish main sequence stars. We have white dwarfs. We also have main sequence stars that are very hot and very bluish. It may be size like this. And these are the ones that are burning very, very brightly. With that, uh, let me move on to the uh, video part here. So uh, thank you once again. Keep your questions coming. Any new subscribers, uh, welcome aboard. I uh, hope to uh, continue these lectures with you.